Hey everyone, welcome to day four, week nine. And we're continuing this uh, week's theme, which is night, nighttime, night life, you know, however uh, many ways you guys uh, want to define night, that's totally awesome. For me, uh, I did a portrait on Monday, then an interior on Tuesday, then a portrait yesterday. And I'm going outside for this one in my uh, neighborhood <laughs> that I grew up. You know, this is my mom's house. I've walked down this street for most of my life. I know those arches that I'm going to paint, you know, by heart. So uh, it's going to be super fun. So let's see how that goes. I'll see you later. Okay, this is uh, day four. Uh, here we go. Uh, I think this is going to be the first time you guys see me do exteriors, if I'm not mistaken, for this channel. And <laughs> the weird thing is, is that I am very, very insecure about doing exteriors, about painting outside, about plein air painting. I am very aware of my shortcomings as a painter when I paint outside. And I've been able to try and trace them to the reason why I feel so insecure about it. And I think it's pretty much the feeling that the universe is out there, that you can turn 360 degrees and you could pretty much pick anything. But it just seems so boundless when we look at nature. I've even tried those little viewfinders that let you pick compositions they did nothing for me. It doesn't make it manageable for me, to be entirely honest. I remember uh, when I had my friend Dice, we, uh, we went to school together with Dice, and he came to Columbia, actually, to paint. He was on this moment in his life where he was traveling and painting, you know, in all these countries. And he wanted to come to uh, Columbia, so I hosted him, and I was super, super happy that, that he would come. We went out and painted, and just seeing Dice paint, I mean, it is absolutely magical. Just his notion of how to compose something in a very, very simple manner. But when I was with him, I was looking at what he was looking, and I just couldn't simplify in the same way that he could. It was impossible for me to find syntheses in what I was observing, but he had that down. He had that just incredibly down. It was amazing. I think he was here for a week. This was many years ago, but he was here for a week. And I remember thinking that I was horrible. I mean, the first times we went out to paint, I, I remember just feeling horrible, just totally out of my element. And this is very, very true sometimes for us figurative painters. The people that have trained and have learned how to paint, it can be from life, but from the model inside a studio, I think it's very, very beneficial to step outside and face that universe that is ever-changing. Light just shifts constantly, it fluctuates, and you have no idea of how to grasp anything. Again, for me, it was like anything. I couldn't grasp light, I couldn't grasp composition. Um, it, it was very, very tough for me. But I remember we actually took a trip and we went to a town that's about I don't know, maybe three hours away, a little bit more. And we painted there in the day, and we also went out and painted at night. And for some reason, something clicked about painting at night. And that was the first, and I think only painting out of those seven days that we painted together, that actually felt like it was a decent painting, like I finally had understood something. I don't know what it was, to be totally honest. Maybe it was just the fact that I could spot shadows easily because the light sources were were just lamps and obviously this ambient lighting of you know the night of the moon so it's a very cool bluish uh, ambient light but it's also these very long very easily recognizable cast shadows that I think that that painting and I don't have that painting I wish I could show you guys that painting was again this was many many years ago I don't even know what I did with that painting probably painted over it <laughs> as I do with everything that bothers me I remember just feeling okay I think I kind of get it I think I kind of understand how I have to reinvent myself as a painter to be out here and to make sense of, of nature 
Because again, I think it's quite containing when you paint inside a studio. I think it really, really puts your brain sort of at ease when you have your natural light coming through a skylight or a north window or you have your lamps just emitting this constant light. I think it is very determining for your painting to have those set conditions and to grow accustomed and, dare I say, lazy with those conditions. So when you step out of your comfort zone and you suddenly encounter things that are just you know, so, so foreign to what you're used to doing, you realize, I know how to paint one thing, but I'm not really a good painter. And I think that happened to me, and that still happens to me every single time I go outside to paint, every single time. I mean, it is, it is something that I, I don't try to shy away from it, but I know that it is a weakness in my painting. I don't want to believe that you have to be either or. Like, you have to be a great studio painter that can paint form, and if you're interested in, in the portrayal of human beings, you are one sort of painter. But if you want to paint nature, you have to be another painter. You could be Kramskoy, or you could be Shishkin, or Levitan. But it's very strange to see one painter be able to do both equally as strongly. I mean, Sargent would do that, or Soroja would do that. So there are painters, there are extraordinary painters that can do that. But for me, it's just, I just have a feeling of everything being overwhelming. And I think that because I've recognized that within my painting, I started to understand that I have to do something about it. If I really want to get better at it, and not for the sake of getting better at painting at night or painting urban scenes or painting plein air, it doesn't matter. Again, it's about becoming not a strong painter for the sake of painting great paintings, but becoming better in the sense of how in touch I am with nature and how I can translate what I'm seeing into painting, how I can say, you know, through painting. And I think in my case, because this is going to be different for absolutely everyone, I think in my case, it has to be about simplicity. I mean, this is just crazy, but that is just how painting goes, that sometimes the answer to the uh, most difficult questions is the simplest one. I think what I had to do, or what I have to do, is to uh, slow everything down, everything down, and try to make stronger, more worthwhile decisions. Simplicity in the sense that my choices in terms of composition have to be stronger, I have to be able to visualize the wholeness of my image when I'm looking at nature. And I have to be able to conceive it very, very simply. Very, very simply. To understand the, the notion, the core idea of what I want to paint. Very, very simply. I have to be able to, to almost explain it to myself in very simple terms. And if I'm able to explain it to myself in simple terms, then I'm able to translate those very simple terms into painted decisions. I think for me that kind of works. So having said that, you saw me here at the beginning doing something that is very alien to, to me because I actually feel so comfortable just doing more organic subject matter. To me, having a ruler aid my strokes is just strange. And I thought the ruler was best and not just trying to find the vanishing point, which I could have done in like two seconds. But I wanted to keep a sense of freshness in, in my painting. So I decided I'm going to use my ruler, which is actually propped up by, by like four little squares, two on each side of a foam board. I just taped it on the, on the sides of the ruler so they don't actually touch the painting. So I thought that's going to be a cool way to, to sort of have a little help so I can find those very precise moments where I need to ground my perspective because perspective to me is my bane. So because I struggle with getting a grasp, like a firm grasp on this sort of subject matter, I realized, okay, don't do anything weird. Have those angles correct from the start. If you need, just take a ruler and just find those angles. And if they're off, like you saw me, they were off during my painting. I thought they were right while I was painting, but they were actually off. And I, I needed to be comfortable just 
telling myself, okay, just adjustment, you know, adjust, adjust, adjust while you paint. That's totally fine, totally cool. You can do this. And it's a very simple painting. It's a, it's a super, super simple painting. This is like the neighborhood I grew up in, and this is one of the, um, of the sides of the houses. So I've walked down this street, this little bit of street, forever. I know these by heart. The essence of the painting was just this little blue light at the end of this trail that I was hoping you could kind of travel through by saying, okay, there's a hint of this little purple in that first plane, in that side plane of that brick that's holding up that column of the archways. Um, there's a hint of blue, and I was hoping, okay, let me see if I could almost do a breadcrumb of blue, and let me see if I can make you follow that little breadcrumb down to that tiny little window that had the lights on. But in this path, in this little journey, there has to be interesting stuff happening. So there has to be nice, long cast shadows that have cool design. There has to be contrast. There has to be shifting in hues, little moments of saturation. That wall in shadow, I'm very happy because when I squint, I can totally see it coming together. But when I open my eyes and I let a lot of light in, there's these greens, these purples, these blues. So it's very, very rich. And it's something that I, I totally felt when I saw this wall. And I wanted that saturated blue, which is almost pure cobalt blue, way in the back. And I wanted it to be, it's almost like an exclamation point, like a punchline. But I didn't want it to be overstated. I, I didn't want it to be like, like boom, you got there. And it's like, yes. Um, no, I want it to be like uh, you have anchor points in your journey through life and <laughs> you almost know where you have to go but that's not where you're going to stop <laughs> that's just uh, like a like a waypoint that's just like a little moment where you say okay yeah I'm following the right path but I have to keep going I wanted that little light to have that quality that it wasn't where you're supposed to go it just means that you're supposed to go in that direction it <laughs> that was kind of what I was thinking while I was painting this so this is me, and this is going to be actually something that's going to happen in the next few weeks, and I hope it, it happens more often than not with these paintings. This is me feeling comfortable with just painting something that I'm not comfortable painting. <laughs> and I think that that's awesome, because I know that there is a commercial aspect to this channel. Because we don't accept sponsorships, we have to find a way to finance this channel, which is by selling the paintings. But if you think about it, if I'm painting stuff that I'm not really good at, then the chances of selling a painting are lessened. So I have every reason to shy away from the things that I don't feel so secure about painting. And yet, I think the biggest value of doing an exercise like this, like this project, is to say, Wow, if it is about painting, if this is about the role of painting in my life, I also have to encounter the tough times. I can enjoy all those moments where I'm like flying and I'm, I'm, I'm totally hitting my painting and by the end of the painting, I'm like, hell yeah, that was a cool painting. And I, I kind of sensed that I was going to be able to kick ass in this painting. But I also want, because I do want that, because these are learning experiences, why would I ever not want to learn more from painting? I also want these moments where, oof, where I have to say, well, I know I can paint. I know I have established and I've built and constructed a very strong relationship with my materials, with painting. And I know my relationship is strong. My bond is strong. But I know that it can be stronger. I know that by encountering these moments where I am totally out of my element, I can say, wow, this was very tough, but let's power through it. And this is going to be an incredible learning experience. And why wouldn't I want to learn more, you know, from these two years, hopefully more, uh, from these two years that we're going to do this project? Why wouldn't I want to get the most out of it and push myself? The idea here is to push, push, push. I don't want to be the same painter in two years than the one I was when I started. In two years, I want to be someone totally different. I want to have grown as a human being, obviously, hopefully, and as a painter. And it would be 
ridiculous if I see myself two years from now and I go like, oh yeah, I just did more paintings, more of the same. It's just insane. That to me would be insanity. So I do want these paintings, even if they're almost insignificant and they're small and they just have this quality about them of being exercises, I want them to be incredibly important and dear to me. I think that I can only teach myself how to do that if I pair the good times with tough times. And I'm not afraid of that. I'm super, super not afraid of that. So I think I'm going to be taking a lot more risks um, in the future. I hope so. This is me. This is me just psyching myself up, like pumping myself up, like, hell yeah, do it. <laughs> but I do. I do. I feel that I want to get closer to the painter that I've always envisioned myself I can be. And to describe it to you guys very easily, I want to paint simpler. I think that painting is like explaining something to yourself. And when socializing the image, you're explaining yourself to others. But you can actually choose to have a very simple explanation that has stemmed from a very complex problem. Or you can make your explanation be as complex and convoluted as you want. Those are choices that we can make as painters. And to be honest, one is not more valid than the other. We have to find the one that suits our life and our vision for our life and our personality and our sensibility more. And I think the one that suits me more is to be simple and to be clean and try to be clear. There's no sense in just making something that's as complex as nature because there's nothing more complex than the nature of things. It's insane to take that and to say, oh yeah, I'm going to make it even harder. <laughs> No, I want to make it simple. I want to see through all the madness and through all the craziness that is the way we perceive the universe and see if I can understand it simply. I think that's my path. And I think these little moments, um, this painting maybe is like that little window back there. It's just a waypoint. It's just a little torch in my journey that tells me, okay, this is the right way. You, you can't rest here. This is not the finish line. But it's actually the right path. And I actually love that about this exercise that we're doing. So, so that was today. A lot of struggling, a lot of encountering, uh, something I'm clearly not, not good at. But uh, I do it with joy and I welcome it. And I paint my heart out every time I have the chance. So uh, <laughs> I'll see you guys tomorrow for our last day on this week's um, night theme. So thank you for hanging out today. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye.